So today we're going to talk about forgiveness, and we're going to look at the biblical witness of forgiveness, namely from Genesis, our first lesson, and also from the Gospel of Matthew. The story in Genesis that we heard is the story of Joseph and how he forgave his brothers at the very end of Genesis. But why did he need to forgive his brothers? Well, let's go back and, and, and retell that story a little bit. You probably already know most of it. Joseph was the second youngest of 12 to Jacob, who's Israel. And um, jo Joseph was his daddy's favorite. And he was so favorited that he got a coat of all these colors, and he walked around with his fancy little coat, and his brothers didn't like that. They were mad because his father loved him the most, and so they planned to kill him. Talk about family dynamics, right? So Joseph didn't get killed. His brothers, instead of killing him, sold him into slavery, and Joseph ends up in Egypt, and he's in prison. And while he's in prison, he has these dreams, he helps the king, he helps the pharaoh, rather, and then he ends up getting released and eventually works his way up to number two in the whole region. There's Pharaoh and there's Joseph, and now all of a sudden this famine happens and his brothers are hungry and they make their way into Egypt. And who do they find? Joseph, number two. And if, if it was me, I'd be like, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. But he doesn't. They come to him and they plead with him, forgive us, we, we did wrong. We'll even be your slaves. And Joseph cries and he hugs his brothers and they cry. He says, don't be afraid, you are forgiven. And he feeds them and he restores them and they live together there and he offers forgiveness. Now this story in the early church was used a lot to describe the actions of Jesus as well. That Jesus was this, this figure that was despised and enslaved and tortured and beat and died and then was resurrected at this lofty position and offered forgiveness without any question. So Jesus today is talking about forgiveness in our gospel. And we're going to come back to Joseph in a second. And the gospel today is from Matthew 18. And we got the first part of this last week when Pastor Heather preached about reconciliation. And you might remember this where it's like, if I have a problem with you, I'm supposed to go and try to reconcile that problem. And if I can't deal with that problem, just the two of us, then I'm supposed to bring somebody else in to deal with that problem so that way you and I are going to deal with it and this other person is going to help. And if that doesn't work, I grab another person and I bring them in and then the four of us are trying to rationalize this, figure this out, we're trying to reconcile. And if that doesn't work, everybody's coming in to try to help us get to this place of reconciliation. And Jesus says, where two or three are doing this, that's where I am. I'm in that reconciliation. I'm in that act of forgiveness. That's where I exist. That's where I am. You should never stop trying to do this. And that's when Peter looks at him and says, how many times do I need to do this? Seven times? And Jesus says, no, 77 times. In other scripture, it says 70 times, seven times. In other words, it's astronomical. You should never stop. The thing is, these numbers are, are pretty important. The number seven in the Bible, it describes completeness. It describes perfection. Three being divinity, four being the four corners of the earth. Seven is like the perfect number. And so Peter's looking at Jesus saying, how many times do I need to do it? How can I get this perfect? How can I do this and be done with it? That'd be my thing too. How do I just get over it and be done and go on? And Jesus says, no, you're never going to stop. It's 70 times that. It's 70 times perfection. You're going to keep doing this over and over and over. And if you don't understand, let me tell you this story about this king. And he says, because this is how God operates. This is the kingdom of heaven. This is God's way of forgiving. He says, there's this king, and he has this slave that owes him 10,000 talents. Now, that doesn't mean anything to us, but back then it meant something to them, because a talent was like a year's wage or five years' wage or something like that. So just imagine 10,000 of that. That's a huge number, so let's just call it a zillion, okay? Let's just put that number out there. It's a zillion dollars that this guy owes. So I'm already questioning why the king would give out a zillion dollars, but that's not part of the story, right? So the slave owes a zillion dollars to this king. He comes back. He finds out he can't pay. And the king says, go take him and, throw, and sell him and sell all his possessions. In fact, sell his wife, sell his kids. Now, this is kind of 
um, um, extraordinary. You know, this is a, uh, they're kind of inflating it a little bit. It's, it's kind of making a, a mockery of this kind of concept because they wouldn't do that in Jewish tradition. And by the way, a slave would only pull in about 400 uh, to, to 1,000 denarii, which is really more like 100 to $400. You know, so compare that to a zillion. That's not going to do anything. So this slave says, have patience with me and I'll pay back everything. And what does the king do, the Lord do? Okay, you're forgiven. It's wiped out. It's done, just like that. And that same guy goes walking down the road, proud as a peacock now, I don't have any debt. And he finds his friend, his fellow slave, who owes him 100 denarii, which is about 20 bucks, okay? And he walks up to him and he's like, hey, you owe me $20. He's like, dude, I, I'm, I'm strapped, man. I don't have it. Uh, can you have patience with me? No, I'm throwing you into prison. And you're going to have to stay there until you can pay me back, which is absurd because how is he going to pay him back if he's in prison? You follow kind of they're having some fun with some of this logic back in the day. So then the other slaves find out that this is going on. They go tell the Lord, and the Lord comes back and says, you're so wicked. Why would you do that? You're going to receive exactly what you gave to this person. You're going to be tortured by this. Then he looks at the disciples and he says, this is how God forgives. And he's asking you to forgive from your heart and to never stop doing it. Because that's where I am, is in that reconciliation, in that forgiveness. Every confrontation that we have, every interaction that we have, every issue that comes up, the goal should be reconciliation and forgiveness because that's where I am, says Jesus. How many times are we supposed to forgive? Well, I have a feeling that if we're counting the times that I've forgiven you, have I really forgiven you? If I'm counting, I've done it like seven times. Don't you forgive me yet? Yeah. And and I also enjoy this too because whenever I think about what somebody else has done to me, their sin is so much bigger than any sin that I've ever done. Uh, I always think about what they did over there. That's huge. I'm going to have a hard time forgiving that. But what I did to you, that's not that bad. It's not really that bad. I heard it uh, said one time that the distance between those two sins is like the distance between San Antonio and Austin if you were looking at it from the perspective of the sun. It doesn't exist. And at the end of the day, God forgives all of that anyway and asks us to do the same exact thing because that's where God is, in the forgiveness, in that act of doing it. And how often are we supposed to do it? All the time, never ending, all the time. So today we have a great opportunity. We have a great opportunity to forgive those people that are around us, forgive the people that have harmed us, and do that with our heart, knowing that at the end of the day, it's not ours to deal with, it's God's to deal with. Joseph, at the very end of, of, of Genesis, He says to his brothers, don't be afraid. You intended harm to come to me, but God intended this for good so that other lives might be saved. Had he not been imprisoned, he would have not have done the the interpretation. He would not have saved food. The family would have killed them all. And lo and behold, he sees God's work even in that act and looks at them and says, Had you not done this, lives would not have been saved. Of course, I forgive you because there's God involved in all of this. So maybe we could try that just today, just for today, and forgive from the heart. Amen.